the changes in, in the industry, particularly from the audio side, I think have been manifest in digital technology over the last 10, 15 years, um, both obviously more recently with wireless, but back uh, from my point of view from consoles and speaker processing, we've gone from, a, I was around as we were transitioning out of analog, big analog consoles in the theater to digital consoles and had to manage that transition through some uh, through some tricky moments because you know the early digital consoles were were tough to handle. Um, also, very exciting times though because we were suddenly had a whole new set of tools and a whole uh, new set of things to learn about. Um, and so, as challenging as it is and and was, it's also been a lot of fun um, because we've all been kind of part of the development of those of those instruments. Um, remote control has become very. Um, uh, sophisticated in a way that it wasn't when I first started in the business. So the ability to make real-time changes, um, even from a seat in the theater for the sound designer on a during a performance, is very powerful and allows us a lot of freedom uh, that we didn't have before. I think moving forward uh, into the future, the sound designer's job doesn't change that much. I think our job is still to tell these stories as best we can, given the available tools and time and resources. Um, and participate in this at the highest possible level. Uh, I do think that there's a trend in the industry now towards immersive sound, and uh, with the response to virtual reality, we're gonna see some of that coming into the live environment, into theater. Um, and I think that localization is also a big thing, and I don't know if uh, people understand what that is, but the idea that a live person on stage in these relatively small venues of 1,000 seats, 1,200 seats, 1,300 seats, where the amplification actually follows them around a little bit. Um, so that you're not just listening to a sound system amplify a human being, but you're actually listening to their sound being amplified uh, through certain subsystems so that it arrives to you in a way that's more plausible than it would if you were just generally amplifying. And that is not, that's been a holy grail for a long time in, in live theater, and people have been working on it for decades, and I mean decades, probably 30 years, if not more. Um, but recently the tools are getting better. There's been a, a real push to make the tools better. There's tracking, there's matrixing, there's very complicated digital processing that's become available to us to try and do that, that has actually run, um, that's been uh, having a sort of a parallel path in the cinema industry with uh, Dolby Atmos and object-based uh, sound design for film. And so I think those two things are going to start meeting even more um, as the technology gets better and more refined, which it's already doing, and as the demand for immersive experiences uh, sort of infiltrates the theater even more, Sound designers are going to have to figure out ways to use that, uh, not just the technology, but the approach to do the thing they're supposed to be doing already, which is to help tell the story better, right? You know, I think that experience of listening to a person, a live person or a live uh, band in a theater, um, in some ways it's going to change a lot, right? We're going to, we're going to bring uh, new ideas about what that means to an audience. but. I don't know. I, I still think the job is interesting. It still gets distilled down to this one this one idea. And I talk to older sound designers about this who aren't even in business anymore. Who they, their goals are the same. The, the goals haven't changed. It's just the technology changes. Every you know the tools change. And sometimes there's an approach that might change. Somebody might bring a new idea into the theater. But we really are just trying to make the best possible transmission of this material to the audience and make it appropriate to the to the style and to the ideas of the writers and the director and all the people who work on these things. We're a terribly manipulative group of people. <laughs> we can't help ourselves and all we want to do is make an audience uh, hear, see, and feel something. You know, that doesn't change. We're, we're, we're deeply committed to it and every moment in a Broadway theater is curated to do that. Uh, that's our job and that's what we go to work to do every day and we moment to moment basis we're just doing it live which is you know a, a tricky business at best but uh, it's it's no different than than what what anybody who's trying to tell stories is trying to do mm -hmm.